ಯಸ್ತ್ಯಕ್ತ್ವಾಪಮ್ಯಂ ಪ್ರಭವತಿ ಜಗತ ಅನೇಕಧಗ್ರಹ ಪ್ರಕ್ಷೀನ ಕ್ಲೇಶರಾಶಿ ವಿಷಮ ವಿಷಧರ ಅನೇಕ ವಕ್ತ್ರಸ್ಸುಭೋಗಿ ಸರ್ವಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರಸೂತಿ ಭೋಜಗಪರಿಕರ ಪ್ರೀತಯೇ ಯೋಹೀಷ ಸವೋ ವ್ಯಾತ್ ಸಿತ ವಿಮಲತನು ಯೋಗದೋ ಯೋಗಯುಕ್ತ ಯೋಗೇನ ಚಿತ್ತ ಪದೇನ ವಾಚ ಮಲಂ ಶರೀರ ವೈದ್ಯಕೇನ ಯೋಪಾಕರೋತ್ತ ಪ್ರವರ ಮುನೀನ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಂಜಲಿರಾನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಆಹುಪುರುಷಾಕಾರ ಶಂಖಚಕ್ರಾಸಿಧಾರಿಣ ಸಹಸ್ರಶಿರಸ ಶ್ವೇತ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಅನಂತ ನಾಗರಾಜಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಪಾತಂಜಲ ಮಹಾಭಾಷ್ಯ ಚರಕ ಪ್ರತಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಮನೋವಾಕಾಯ ದೋಷಾಂ ಹರ್ತ್ರೇ ಅಹಿ ಪತೇ ನಮಃ so good morning friends today we are entering the section of the sutras that is a very important section especially acharyas like krishna macharya considered this sutra that we are going to discuss today as one of the most important sutras in the entire yoga sutra of patanjali last week we concluded with the sutra bhava pratyayo videha prakriti layanam which means that certain people have a, a general predisposition to be in the state of samadhi to enter the state of yoga who are such people such people are called bhava pratyayas which means these people they are having this great quality by birth from their time of birth in modern times we would call them prodigies like musical prodigy or mathematical prodigy, prodigy or sport prodigy etc but perhaps in the field of yoga and spirituality as well there were prodigies there are prodigies and probably there will be prodigies and these people are called bhava pratyayas they are people who have these capacities from the time of their birth but what about the others like us people like us who are not having the capacity to be in a state of yoga by mere virtue of our birth do we have a chance do we have a hope that is the question that we can ask and patanjali answers this by saying well there is hope for others as well and that is why he presents this sutra shraddha virya smriti samadhi pragnya purvaka itaresham for the others purvaka itaresham 
Purvaka means what has been said before. Itaresham, others, other than those who have been discussed before, which means other than those bhava pratyayas. For the other people, there is a method. That method starts with what is called Shraddha and has to go through the process of Viryam, Smriti and therefore Samadhi Prajna. So this Sutra is essentially a very important Sutra for many of us because Patanjali here presents the mechanism in order for us to reach the state of Yoga and it starts with Shraddha or faith. There is so much significance to this sutra and in my understanding and in my discussions with my teacher, I see that this is one of the key sutras that defines the difference between Eastern traditions such as Yoga, Sankhya, Vedanta etc. and modern science, modern methods and this is a very big paradigm difference. The Sutra of Patanjali says, it starts with the word Shraddha or faith. Conviction or faith, you can use any of these words because faith here is not religious faith. Faith is more like a conviction, a belief in self capacity, a belief in the words of a competent teacher, a belief in the practice of yoga. In this context, that is the most relevant thing, the belief in the practice of yoga's tools. And the sutra ends, towards the end of the sutra, it says pragna. Pragna means clarity. There is understanding or there is clarity. So the method put forward by Patanjali, the paradigm that Patanjali is presenting is, we have to start with Shraddha so that the result is Pragna. We have to start with conviction. We have to start with self-belief. We have to start with faith in the teaching mechanisms so that the result will be clarity. The result will be knowledge. Pragna in a simple way is knowledge or clarity. We will explore this a bit later. So this is the method presented by Patanjali. He says, have faith. Eventually, you will have clarity. Have faith and put into practice a set of tools that I will offer. Eventually, you will have clarity. Whereas in the modern era, we are taught to question everything and we are asked to do exactly the opposite. We are asked to ask for proof or knowledge or clarity. Before we attempt to do something, suppose I offer a tool of yoga to somebody, before they want to practice, they want to know, will this work for me? Will this cure my diabetes? Will this lead me to samadhi? Will I become enlightened? They want to know before they take an effort. This is the modern paradigm. We want proof. We want evidence. That's why modern science is based on evidence-based research. Evidence-based. Evidence is the basis for decision making. But yoga is presenting exactly the reverse. Yoga is saying, Patanjali the great master is saying, have faith in the process. Eventually you will have clarity. It's exactly the opposite. So we in the modern era who are practitioners of yoga must reflect a little bit to, on this issue and then come to the conclusion what is it that our personal choice is going to be. Because Patanjali is put, putting forth a view which is starting with Shraddha resulting in clarity whereas in the modern era, the modern educational system we are trained to do the opposite. So, what Patanjali is expecting from us is a paradigm shift in our thinking, in our actions. He is saying, well, we cannot always go by evidence and then take some steps. Sometimes we have to take a leap of faith. Many spiritual traditions 
depend on this topic of faith or conviction as its foundation and yoga is no different for yoga the starting point of practice is faith that is why the word shraddha is used because the word shraddha comes from the etymological origin dhudhanch dharana poshana yoho the root is dhudhanch the meanings are two meanings dharana that which supports you it's the foundation in a building we have a foundation that is holding the building that is the dharana for the building the support for the building and this building which is relying on the support it's not only just being supported but the word shraddha has a second meaning poshana yoho which means it's nourishing so shraddha is not only the foundation of practice but it is also what nourishes the practice what brings life to the practice acharyas like krishna acharya and others before him were always of the opinion that if you remove the element of shraddha from yoga you are removing yoga itself because it's almost like you are removing the very essence of yoga because shraddha is a very important factor in yoga perhaps it is the reason why many times in modern era yoga is not working because many people would like to take the tools of yoga but they remove the critical ingredient called the shraddha that is the foundation for the tool if you remove that <coughs> ingredient it's almost like you are removing the fish out of water it has no life so shraddha comes from that root Shraddha is the foundation. Shraddha is also defined by Vyasa as Chetasa Samprasadaha. The word Chetasa means the mind. Samprasadaha means it is like a, a gift <clears throat> or a blessing or something preciousness of the mind. When the mind is having faith. the mind's quality is different when the mind has doubts the mind's quality is different as vyasa will present or sorry as patanjali will present later doubt is an obstacle in our path when we have doubts we don't progress it contracts us it makes us shrink whereas shraddha is an expansive quality that is why he says when the mind is having shraddha when the person is having shraddha the mind's quality takes a very positive structure it's not negative it's not negative and you will see that later in the sutras patanjali says you become what the what you are holding dharana dhyanam samadhi when patanjali discusses later in the chapters he says that meditation is a process where whatever you hold in the mind that is what you will become so if you hold doubts in your mind all the time that is what you will become whereas when you hold shraddha in your mind that is what you will become the mind quality becomes dependent on what it is containing so that is why acharyas like vyasa are saying that shraddha is an essentially positive quality of the mind the capacity of the mind to be positive to have openness and what shrad what vyasa is further explaining about the word shraddha is he says sa shraddha hi janani iva yoginam pati it's a beautiful beautiful statement which was very valid in the old times in modern era things may be a little different especially in cultures outside india in the indian culture they say that <clears throat> mother is very nourishing and protecting of the child 
the word janani means the mother the one who gives janma is janani the one who gives birth is mother so sa shraddahi janani eva this shraddha like the mother yoginam pati it protects it takes care of the yogis just like the mother usually a good mother will take care of the child will nourish the child especially when the child is dependent same way he says that the shraddha will take care of the yogi who is practicing in this context the word yogi means the one who is practicing the tools of yoga i discuss this question with my father this relevance of this because i know that in modern era many people have sometimes problems with the mothers bad relationship with the mothers sometimes some mothers have not necessarily been nice to the children etc and uh, at some point my many times i discuss this topic and at some point my father also engaged a discussion between me himself and another psychoanalyst from europe and we discussed this topic and my father made a very profound statement and he said that when we look at this verse or this phrase from vyasa he says that those who have essentially some kind of conflict with the mother will have somehow problems with shraddha or faith these problems can be conscious cognitive or it can be unconscious non cognitive etc and he made a statement my father made this statement my teacher that often he has seen in his experience that a person shraddha very often depends on the relationship that they share with the mother or the mother figure because some people don't have a mother the mother passes away when they are young <clears throat> mother figure and it's very interesting because this psychoanalyst as well said that in his experience he also felt the same thing and this is what vyasa has talked about in a very subtle way in a metaphoric way that shraddha is like the mother and sometimes we may have to re engage with the relationship that we share with our own mother in order to reevaluate our shraddha so this is what vyasa is saying that shraddha is a very fundamental supporting protective structure please remember again shraddha is protecting the person who is practicing so it is equating shraddha to a responsible good mother who is fulfilling her dharma towards the child and in the traditional times when vyasa was alive certainly the mothers usually were like this they were not careless usually they were like that but today in modern society there is more challenges and there is chances that some mothers may not be necessarily fulfilling their dharma but it doesn't mean that there aren't other mothers who are fulfilling their dharma this is very important because the mother is the one that is giving our first foundational stability when the mother is holding the child when the mother is making contact with the child when the mother is embracing the child this reassures the child of its security in the yogic language we associate this kind of issues of security with the mooladhara chakra the mooladhara's developmental stage is essentially from the time we are conceived till about 12 months after we are born and the mooladhara chakra is essentially that which gives us stability and faith and security etc any trauma or any disturbance to the mooladhara chakra can impact our capacity to be stable capacity to have steadiness and faith and therefore the relationship that is between a mother and a child at this stage is very significant 
because usually in this time frame from the time of conception till delivery the mother and the child have a relationship that is almost as if they are merged mother is holding the child inside so in certain way she is protecting the child she is holding the child that is the dharana the holding then after the baby is born the mother is usually nursing the child for some time which means she will have to spend a lot of time holding the child as well she will have to take care of the child the physical contact is very essential and all these in the yogic language influence the muladhara chakra very greatly and it brings great stability to the child great faith and conviction to the child so that is why they associate the shraddha to the mother because at the very fundamental age of our development there is a strong bond between mother and child and that is the foundation for our own self belief self conviction etc because even in modern psychology we talk about a concept called enmeshment the child and the mother feel as if there is one or at least in the child's point of view it cannot separate itself from its mother especially but as well as from its early environment it feels part of it but at that time when it's kind of abandoned and rejected etc there is a disconnection that happens the foundation is not stable and therefore its faith gets affected in such cases people will have issues of faith and therefore they will have issues with yoga practices as well because they will not be able to do it with the shraddha that patanjali is asking us to have that patanjali is essentially asking us to have so unless shraddha is there the next steps will not happen now what patanjali also presents is very significant he says when shraddha is there there is viryam when you have faith you cannot have fear viryam means confidence when there is shraddha there is no fear my father always used to say this when faith enters through the front door fear leaves through the back door you cannot have both at the same time you can have belief and fear but you cannot have shraddha and fear shraddha and fear are kind of opposites when there is shraddha there can be no fear that's why patanjali says when there is shraddha there is viryam viryam means confidence confidence in the practice that is given confidence in our own ability vyasa says viryam utsaham viryam means motivation the faith will give you motivation and therefore you will be more committed to the yoga practice when there is not that faith and when you are not motivated you are not going to be committed to the yoga practice you are going to be okay i will do it tomorrow or you will do it for two days and then stop and then suddenly you will say oh i forgot to do my yoga let me do it for another two days the process will not be continuous so vyasa is defining viryam in this way Acharya Krishna Acharya defines viryam slightly differently more strong he says viryam dhairyam viryam means dhairyam sthira buddhi pratigna cha bhavati viryam has three meanings dhairyam dhairyam means confidence in tamil also we have the same word dhairyam means confidence self confidence when you have faith you will have great self confidence sthira buddhi the mind is steady the mind does not oscillate i talked about doubts doubts is the opposite of faith now what does the mind do when it has doubts should i go this way should i go this way oh should i go that way oh should i go that way the mind is oscillating when we are having doubts but when there is shraddha the mind becomes steady sthira buddhi sthira buddhi means the mind is steady it does not oscillate it's steady pratigna cha bhavati pratigna means commitment it's a commitment 
You don't run away from that commitment. This is one major problem many of us in the modern era we have. There is a fear of commitment. We don't want to commit to anything because we are afraid. That's the opposite of Shraddha. When there is Shraddha, there is commitment. When there is no Shraddha, there is no commitment. It's a very classic example what we see today. People are afraid of commitment. Why? Because there is lack of faith. When there is faith, there is no fear of commitment. That's why Krishnamacharya says Pratigna. When we practice, we have to make a commitment to practice. We cannot say, oh, I will do it one day and try and let's see what happens. Unfortunately, yoga takes time. It cannot be a magic solution where you do headstand now and then all your problems disappear. I wish. And we can all do it for a few minutes and then our problems disappear. Yoga takes time. Sustained energy has to be put in. Sustained effort has to be put in. Which means there is a commitment to practice. And that is why Shraddha is needed. Because that is what will bring us to make that commitment. To make us. Because <laughs> yoga is asking us to commit without knowing what will be the result. We don't know what will be the result. We have to have a faith and to have commitment. You have to have a faith and to have a commitment. That's why I talked about the paradigm shift. The paradigm shift. Nowadays we are doing courses in our center. All the people want to know in advance. How long will the course be? What will you teach in the course? Who will teach the course? How much will it cost? When will the tea breaks be? They want to know all the information. Then they make a decision to come. <clears throat> In the early 1900s, when my grandfather went to look for his teacher, he went all the way from South India to the Himalaya mountains, which was a few months journey in those days. It was not like a quick flight and then you go there and take a bus and then you are there in the same day. He had to go by train, by walk, by land, by different methods. Some places he had to wait for months to get a permit to cross the border from India to Tibet, etc. And he went all of this without even knowing if the teacher is there. Somebody told him there is a teacher in this place. There was no address given. Saying go to this address. There was no... There was no Information saying that the course will be so much duration. It will cost so much. No information was there. But he had that faith that there will be this teacher. He will teach that to me. He will teach what is best for me. However long it takes to learn, I will stay there. That's why he ended up staying seven and a half years in the Himalayas with a very great teacher with whom he had a very close relationship with without knowing what he will be taught, how much it will cost, how long it will take, whether there will be food available, whether there will be accommodation available, what kind of accommodation will be there, will there be internet and Wi-Fi in the place of learning, all that he didn't know. He had to take that faith and go and commit to that journey. Because imagine from South India to North India, it is so long. Somebody in the middle could have said, there is no teacher. Ah, oh, he's a very difficult teacher. Don't go, don't waste your time. Then we just could have come back. That's what happens today in modern times. People say, oh, I want to go and learn with this teacher. Then somebody says, don't go there. The teacher is bad, go somewhere else. Then that person says, oh, this person has said it's bad, they go somewhere else. Somebody else will say, no, no, that teacher is also bad. You should not go there. You should go somewhere else. So we keep going on this doubtful journey rather than having a sthira buddhi and a pratigna. That's why Acharya Krishnamacharya says, Viryam is sthira buddhi and pratigna. Commitment and steadiness of mind. You have to commit and you have to have a steadiness of mind. That is what is going to take you to the next state. Once this is there, then there is what is called Smriti. Shraddha Virya Smriti. Smriti in this context has been interpreted by many, many people as memory. But it's not just literally memory. What is the use of memory? Okay, 
there is one interpretation that means you are constantly reminding yourself of to being committed in this journey but actually acharyas have defined smriti slightly differently the word smriti and dhyanam meditation are synonyms for example in many poems instead of using the word dhyayami it has been used smarami shankara acharya has written a beautiful poem called bala mukundashtakam balam mukundam manasa smarami karara vindena padara vindam mukara vindena vinivesha yantam vatasya patrasya putesha yanam balam mukundam manasa smarami smarami here means i meditate because the word smriti and dhyanam are synonyms proof of this because some people may ask what is the evidence is in the yoga vartika a commentary by vignana bhikshu and he says smriti hi dhyanam in this context the word smriti has to be understood as meditation so the practice of yoga should become like a meditation practice what is the meaning of meditation meditation means you have to form a very intimate link with the practice such a manner that it's very close to you and your mind is only holding that practice as the focus and it's not getting distracted meditation is a state where you are focused and not distracted you are so focused with the object of meditation that you are not distracted that is what is meditation so that is what is the meaning here smriti hi you are meditating in this journey you are always reminding yourself that i have to be in this path i cannot be distracted you are reminding yourself again and again the tools of yoga my own understanding of this is that the reason why patanjali has used this word is because one of the first tools he presents and one of the most significant tools he presents is mantra because ishvara pranidhana will come immediately after the shraddha sutras and the method to link with ishvara is the mantra which is proposing now mantra japa is a form of meditation you are remembering the mantra again and again with its meaning it's almost like you are meditating on the mantra and the meaning of the mantra so perhaps there is a link with that that we are patanjali is using this word smarami here smriti here this is very very significant so shraddha leads to viryam viryam leads to this meditation acharya krishna acharya says even more significantly he says that here जीवात्मन परमात्मनि शरीरी भाव इति स्मरण वी हेव टू रिमेबर अगेन एंड अगेन दट द बॉडी इज नॉट द रियल एंटिटी इट इज द जीवात्मा नॉट ओनली द जीवात्मा द जीवात्मा इट सेल्फ इज अ डिपेंडेंट ऑफ परमात्मा द डिवाइन सो वी हेव टू कीप रिमेम रिमाइंडिंग ऑफ अवर सेल्फ द गोल ऑफ योगा that is the light in the heart the divine light in the heart that is what will come in a few sutras later when patanjali will say pratyak chetana adigamaha you will you will find the discover the light in your heart so what acharya krishna acharya is saying is practice the tools of yoga with a memory with a reminder again and again that your practice is to go towards this light is to go towards this light is to go towards this divine consciousness that is in your heart that should be the reminder for your practice your practice should not be to get a beautiful body to become very flexible to float in the sky patanjali says none of this nowhere in the sutras if you want all of those you are in the wrong business no you should go somewhere else patanjali keeps saying the goal of yoga is to go back to your heart what is in the heart the light in the heart 
So Acharya Krishnamacharya is saying, don't practice yoga for uh, with other memories. Practice yoga with the reminder that again and again, your practice should take you closer to your heart. And that is what will help you develop concepts like intuition, insight, etc. And that is what will come as a consequence. And that is why he says, once that is there, the next step is Samadhi. You will be in a state of Samadhi. Samadhi is the goal of yoga. It is the goal at least of the first chapter which is called Samadhi Pada. So, Samadhi will come as a consequence of these three steps. Shraddha, Virya, Smriti. And it's only when there is the Samadhi that there is Pragya. Unless you are linked with something very closely, you will never know about that person. Many times people say, Oh, I want to get to know the person before I commit to a relationship. But you will never know the person fully before you are actually in a relationship with the person. So you have to engage in that relationship in order to find out about that person. The clarity comes as a consequence. Now relationship here means many things, not just between people. Relationship can also be between the, pers the person and the object of focus. That is what is dharana, dhyanam, samadhi. So whatever you are meditating on, the knowledge will only come as a consequence of samadhi when you have integrated yourself. And this is very significant also in the yoga point of view because knowledge is not an attribute of the mind according to yoga philosophy. This is again a paradigm shift. According to Sankhya and Yoga, we have two different entities. What is called Purusha and what is called Prakriti. Purusha is the consciousness, the Jivatma. Prakriti is matter. Now, according to Sankhya and Yoga philosophy, matter cannot have knowledge. Purusha is the one that has knowledge. We discussed this already in the second and third sutras. And we say, Gada Drashtu Swarupe Avasthanam. I discussed with you that the Swarupa of the Drashta, the Purusha, is Jnana, Gana, Ananda, Gana Swarupe. It has the attribute of knowledge. Knowledge is an attribute of Purusha, not Prakriti. Now, mind is part of Prakriti. Mind is not part of Purusha. Mind is not part of consciousness. So, knowledge is not a part of mind according to yoga philosophy. What we call nowadays as knowledge is what yoga philosophy calls as Smriti, Samskara, Janya, Jnanam. Knowledge based on memory. It's not based on wisdom, it's not based on insight, it's not based on intuition, it's knowledge based on memory, it's what you remember. That is not knowledge according to yoga. Wisdom is not based on memory, wisdom is based on feelings. So what Patanjali and what Sankhya and yoga philosophy calls as knowledge is what is called as samskara Smriti Samskara Shesha Jnanam Knowledge that is coming when memories and samskaras are quietened. See, you cannot look at a person in front of you and say, this is who the person is based on your memory. The person may have been a good person, may have been a bad person, but what they are right now may be different from what your memory is. So your memory does not determine what is knowledge. Your memory determines a particular set of information at that moment. It's not the reality. So that is why Patanjali calls this Jnana, Pragna, a knowledge that is coming when we are connected to the Purusha, what we call as insight what we call it as the 
yogic perception what we call it as a perception that happens when we are in a state of connection when we are in a state of connection and that is what is pranya so essentially that is what is the message behind this sutra what patanjali says shraddha is the foundation for all yoga practices to work especially for those who are not born with the capacity to be in yoga state and for such people shraddha is the starting point that will lead us to have vairyam confidence and that will lead us to remind ourselves of the path of yoga it will make us remember that we are going towards the heart and that will eventually lead us to a samadhi state and knowledge is a consequence of samadhi state this is very significant knowledge is a consequence of samadhi state especially pragna same thing patanjali will say in the third chapter when he defines dharana dhyanam samadhi then he says tad jayat pragna alokaha pragna again he is using pragna or this knowledge this special knowledge is a consequence of samadhi so unless you are reach the samadhi you won't have that knowledge so all other knowledge that we have is essentially information that is coming from memory and patterning i see somebody every day so i have a knowledge of who they are i don't know actually who they are inside i can recognize them that is not reality of them so that is what the great master patanjali is saying and this sutra is one of the most important sutras for all yoga practitioners and we always have to remember that we have to start with shraddha and no matter what kind of challenges happens we always have to go back and relink with the faith that is the starting process of 